Hello, this is Brer Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. We are going to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. When the truth is too much, and why I stopped celebrating Christmas. Brad Caleb, PhD. You see, the truth should not go to the dustbin of history. And we are happy about this, that we are able to make sure that it won't happen. However, the, tr the truth will allow no one to escape the law and justice, even if they were a US president. However, has the body of Christ been hollow and meaningless for malpractice and strategic blindness? Or was the power trip too much for the leadership? Those are issues that I would like to deal with today. Sensitive issues, but in reality, so extremely important because we live in a day and age that we need to address the reality. And going through a pandemic, some people are wondering, is this the end time? Well, for some it will be. When you face an imminent death or through the pandemic, you get hit and you die, then that is the end for it. However, spiritually, we can be prepared because there is a change. There's not only a change coming, but there is a change possible for everyone. But we, we human beings, we mankind, we need to be aware of that change. And that is called a paradigm shift. We might have a problem with it because we've been told for so long and for almost our whole life what the way was, the way, the way, the way the body of Christ saw the way but what if they were wrong another oxymoron exposed restorative justice See, when we are talking about the truth is too much and why I stopped celebrating Christmas, it has a problem, has been a problem in our family because my kids were brought up that Christmas was something special. I was raised a Christian. My wife and I became both Christians because my wife came out of a Muslim for me, family, and that is why we had a little bit of understanding to do. She always liked Christmas. Even her mom, as a Muslim, she had a Christmas tree for the for the kids. But for my wife, she really enjoys having Christmas, uh, Christmas packages, the whole thing with Christmas and everything around it. But for me, as I changed. And as I became familiar through the court cases that we were dealing with for the past 12 years personally as self-defense in Canada, I became aware that a lot of things that were considered truth were falsified truth. How can you say that? Falsified truth is simply a lie. A lie that has been so sophisticated and has been shared over many generations that we did not question it. But as I learned in court that evidence is extremely important, I started to wonder why do we have so many discrepancies? If I am supposed to be a Christian, if I'm supposed to love my neighbor, and I 
go after them because they don't believe the way I believe. Or I kill people, or at least the generations that I've been watching, they're going out to kill someone because they are not the same as believers as the other group. Then something is wrong because the more I study, and when I say study, reading the old books, when I say old books, I'm talking about the books written in Aramaic, the language that Yeshua HaMessiah spoke, or most people know him by the name of Jesus. Well, when I come to that understanding and realize that in Aramaic, the language that God spoke was different than the way it sounds in Greek, then I wonder, why is that? What else have they changed for us? I've spoken with some friends of mine, professors, pastors, people that really love the Lord. They have come to their own development, their own understanding. They're now retired. But I find it amazing, hard to continue conversations, people that refuse to talk about this. And so that is why this information is important because this information takes many forms. Sometimes it's a manipulated photograph. Sometimes it's a rumor that people share with each other and particularly now with our social media. Misinformation is something that people are studying because through misinformation, complete wars start. And now particularly in the White House, with President Trump. I personally have my own understanding about Mr. Trump, but from a practical point of view, it is sad to see that a man that is so sophisticated or claims to be so sophisticated, he is a self-made billionaire, and it turns out that Daddy gave him only $453 million. Now, to be a self-made billionaire, that means you become a billionaire on your own with one dollar to start off with and not because you inherited half a billion dollars and just the uh, value of the properties because there was a lot of property involved that alone made him a billionaire but then to find out that this man through his own mouth condemns himself because he lies he cheats and he is supported by the body of Christ the majority of them Christians, one form or another. Either they're Roman Catholics or they're Protestants or they're Mormons or there are different types of religions that are supporting him. I call him in general the body of Christ because there are basically only two steps. You either are a Roman Catholic or you're Protestant. And why am I saying that? Well, in the early days, in 325 AD, a lot of material changed. And that's the concept that we are dealing with. What were those changes? And why was it so imperative to make those changes immediately under a threat of death? Because if you did not accept that, you were thrown in the arena and killed by the lions or the soldiers. But one way or another, if you did choose against it, you were killed, period. I believe that we've dealt a couple of times now already with 325. So if you are not familiar with the 325 AD, the time that a empire, emperor of Rome by the name of Constantine I decided to become a Christian and make Christianity, the Roman Catholic Church, under his conditions, you should go back to some of the other videos. However, the bottom line is somebody in 325 AD, that is Anno Domino, that is after Jesus Christ was born, decided to create one religion. He was there to protect his empire. And we see the same today. We're now living in 2021, January. We just started out. And we're seeing already a power grip from somebody that lost the elections, Mr. Trump. And if you read and, support, and check out who is supporting Mr. Trump, somebody by the name of Bibi from Netanyahu, from Israel. That is wonderful. 
then there is somebody else that is connected to the Kazarian Mafia. Uh oh, what is that? Then there's somebody else connected to another Mafia. And you wonder, who are those people supporting Mr. Trump? And then we have the body of Christ supporting Mr. Trump, prophesying this is the man of God and he is the chosen one. And I find it always peculiar when the Mafia, when the people that are most interested in keeping a man like they, him in office, why the Christians are supporting him as well. And this is what brings me to Christianity and Christmas. What is it about Christianity? What is it about the body of Christ? We have some weird alliances lately, or maybe those alliances have been there all along. Maybe they have been there from 325 AD. And what happened then before 325 AD? When Jesus was born in a manger. Ah, now we have a major problem. Because we are dealing now with Christmas. Christmas was one of those days that Jesus was primarily recognized being born on December the 25th. But we know by just simply going through the evidence that we are celebrating the Stolzes. We also know that during the time of the Emperor of Rome, he had a lot of people that he had to satisfy. And many of them celebrated in December the changes of the longest day and the shortest day of society. And so what the Emperor did, he mixed the two together. And he made the pagans Christians by making the Christians pagans. And so now we, as Christians, we are celebrating Christmas because, oh, how wonderful. And we have such wonderful songs. You have tears in your eyes. Uh, watching the TV, you watch all the movies. It is incredible. It's so nice. It's so beautiful. But is it logical? Technically, it doesn't even make sense. If it was in the middle of the winter, then we have a little problem with the sheep. Sheep cannot really run in the middle of the winter. Then we have the public holidays that are Christmas. Wonderful! But they're religiously celebrated by most Christians and culturally by many non-Christians. And they form an integral part of the holiday season centered around it because majority of businesses make one third of all their income of the annual income during the Christmas season. So how do we deal with the deceptive and unwanted programs that convey a great truth? Do you know that some of the popular teachings and beliefs surrounding Christmas are not true? This might surprise you. And the saddest part is that most people think of them as being true. If you do not want to be fooled and left in the dark, you need to continue going and watching this video. Why should we know the truth? Because the Bible tells us to prove all things in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21 and that the truth shall set you free. And John 8 32, if we want to worship God, we need to do it in truth and in spirit. Here are some errors and fallacies and lies being taught and propagated during Christmas. We've never had a means by which information can travel at such speed and we have never had a means by which anybody can create fabricated content really really easy and that is called social media but how come that this truth is hardly known or people prefer not to pay attention to it what is it that people do not want to hear did you know that Christian holidays is largely a recycled pagan celebration? Surprisingly true. Consider the customs associated with Christmas. What do decorated evergreen means? Holy, hollies, mistletoe, yule logs, a jolly plump man in a fur lined red suit, slates and flying re reindeer. What do they concern with the birth of Jesus Christ? No things have anything to do, nothing has anything to do with him, but they have a lot to do with an ancient pagan festival. 
See, history is knocking on your door, folks, and I hope you will answer the door. A true holy man or Hebrew holy man and woman, when they gaze beyond the vision of the Gentiles and perceive God in his ultimate reality where all things are one, the dwelling place of the unbegotten, the ancient of days. If every aspect of creation is imbued with God's DNA, then we can formulate every element of our life to see these forces at work. See, our generation who has for most reasoning an algorithm should be able to agree that we can formulate the elements of life to see those forces at work saturated with God's DNA. So how do we do that? The time of the year, again, this time of the year, we are bombarded with so many things about Christmas, from Christmas songs we hear in the grocery stores to the innocent Christmas greetings of your neighbor. There is no doubt Christmas is among the most anticipated events, not just for Christmas, but for Christians, but for many non-religious people. However, behind the celebrations and warm feelings brought about Christmas, few Christians do not celebrate this traditional holiday. If you dig deep enough in your Bible, you will find reasons that believers, and I'm sharing now the word Christians, and I change that in believers, ought not to celebrate Christmas. Because I personally came and found out that the reason why I can no longer call myself a Christian is the fact that a Christian means different than what you and I were taught. So I want you to want you to follow me. And I want to invite you to take a look at those simple but serious reasons that you and I as believers should not celebrate Christmas. And I hope you understand these reasons with an open heart and with an open mind. It is sad, but pray to God as well as to give you the willing heart to accept this heart to believe truth. So if December 25th is not the birthday of Jesus, what kind of evidence do we have? Many pieces of the evidence refute this claim. For example, the Bible tells us that during the night of Christ was born, there were shepherds out in the field herding the flock. That is in Luke 2 verse 8. The weather in Bethlehem during December is miserably cold. And I can compare it maybe a little bit to Canada. I know that I've been outside in minus 50. And I tell you, you don't even send your dog outside if you can you know, find another solution. So let alone the shepherds. No shepherd would let his tender and fragile flock of sheep be out on the field in this weather. We also recall that Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem for a Roman census. The Roman government would never order such census to occur in a time when the roads are in such a bad condition and the temperature often drops below freezing points. So that shows that December 25th is actually impossible for Christ to be born. Any soul scholar and if even pastors who celebrate Christmas would readily admit that December 25th is not the birthday of Christ. Christmas is a pagan festival. So if December 25th is not the birthday of Christ, then how was this day chosen? If you do a quick research, and you will discover that December 25th is also associated with pagan festivals, often marketing and the birth, or marking the birth of pagan gods. So instead of celebrating the birth of Christ, most Christians now are celebrating the birth of pagan gods, something that God extremely condemns. Most Christian symbols and beliefs have nothing to do with Christ. Have you ever wondered uh, what do the evergreen trees, yule log, mistletoe, flying reindeer, and an old ugly guy in a red jumpsuit concern themselves with Christ and the birth of Christ? The obvious answer is nothing. How about giving gifts to each other during Christmas? Doesn't this just drive the engine of commercialism? Instead of the spirit of giving, what reigns during this holiday is the spirit of getting. 
God did not command us to celebrate Christ's birthday. As much as we like to, God did not tell us to celebrate his birthday. At least twice in the Bible is it mentioned about people celebrating birthdays and both ended in tragedies. If God or Christ wants us to celebrate Christmas, then we should find direct commands out of the Bible. However, not a single verse can be found. To make things even worse, the Bible did not reveal the exact date of Christ's birthday. So, are we free to make our own laws or commandments? Do we have the freedom to designate the date of Christ's birth and worse is to use it as a pagan festival? Are we better than God? The obvious answers to these questions is no. If we adamantly are following God, then we should not add or subtract to his commandments. Now, why is that so important? Some of us remember that I talked about the Ten Commandments. When I discovered the Ten Commandments, I was a young kid and I was always told, don't do that. If you don't do that, you go to hell. And I've been told that I would end up in hell anyway. And I've been excommunicated and therefore I could not go to heaven according the religions that I attended at that time. And some of them are ashamed maybe that they did it. Some of them, it's a joke. Although they are firmly ingrained in what they believe is doing the right thing. But all those statements, what are they telling us? That we are going back to the foundation. When we got the commandments of God, it was first a covenant of God. See, the Ten Commandments, the initial Ten Commandments were the commandments that God gave to his people as a covenant. But when Moses came down the mountain and was so furious about the treatment of the Jewish people that were partying and just acting like morons, that he destroyed the Ten Covenants. Ah, see, there was a covenant for the children of light. And if we do not understand the difference between the covenant between the children of light, the children that are following the way, the truth and the light, and those that got the Ten Commandments, that now had to choose that they either choose for death or they choose See, the challenge that we face today is that we do not understand why the Ten Commandments are the Ten Commandments. We started off with a covenant with God in Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve were born and were in the paradise. They had a covenant with God, and God wanted to ratify that before that happened, Satan or Beelzebub had already manipulated his way through, and so Adam and Eve got kicked out just to save them. Otherwise, they would have been destroyed forever. And now the restorative justice started. And so God found Abram, Abram, Enoch, and then Moses. And Moses was the man that was going to be used to bring the people out of Egypt. But amazing grace, they goofed up. And the covenant that God had created for the children of light had to be postponed. And then when Yeshua finally came, a couple of thousand years later, and he cried out, Abba, Father, it is fulfilled. Now the law was completed because God is law. When God speaks and he created mankind, they were created physically, they were created mentally, and they were created spiritually. They would live forever. We have God who live forever. But in order to live forever, we needed to understand the spiritual aspect of that. And that is why it is so important to understand when God says, I want you to follow the way, the truth and the light, that we call ourselves not just Christians, because Christians are the ones that are following a pagan God, Serapis. He was around in 325 BC before Christ was born. And the followers of Serapis were called Christians. And based on that, the Emperor of Rome, Constantine, he decided to call them Christians based on the 
fact that they were following a pagan god, not Jesus the Christ. And his name was never Jesus. His name was Jeshua HaMashiach. But again, during the times in 325, when the changes occurred, there was a book written about this situation. And those books were all established in the coronavirus. And you say, what is that? That is the vault of the Pope. And Pope Francis made that available a couple of years ago. And in that vault were 53 miles of books and material, manuscripts written in the old Aramaic, the language that God spoke, that Jesua spoke. Because Jesua didn't speak Greek, he spoke Aramaic. And as such, he went out and that language was an old language for us, it was translated into English. And in 1929, somebody spent many, many, many decades to develop and translate the books in English. And I got a hold of those books. And it shared what God wants us to do. And that is why I'm so concerned about today. We are celebrating paganism to the core. And we call ourselves followers of Christ. And folks, I want you to be aware. This is the year 2021 that you and I have a chance to change. Are we willing to be open-minded and check this out and see what I share with you today, if this is the truth? And if it is not, hey, forget it. But if it is, you got to do a major change, folks, because it took me many years to accept this. I'm 71 almost. And when I started out for six decades, I believe this, I share this, I preach this. But when I got to know the law, the way it is, really is, no baloney, just facts, proof, evidence, and precedence. I learned to seek the proof, the evidence. And if I don't have evidence, then I don't believe what it is said. Because if the evidence is not there, you have to dig down till you find the evidence. And God loves you so much that you said tough times never last, but tough people do. I hope you really start checking this out, folks, because it changed my world. God bless you. Bye for now.
Thank you.